Hello students, welcome back. In this video, we will discuss the isometric projection of the truncated hexagonal prism. In the previous videos, we had discussed the isometric projection of the frustum pyramid, then isometric projection of the truncated pyramid, followed by isometric projection of the truncated cylinder. If you wish to check those videos, check the description box for the link after watching this video. Read the question, hexagonal prism, side of base 25 mm and height 50 mm rests on HP and one of the edges of its base is parallel to VP. A section plane perpendicular to VP and inclined at 50 degree to HP bisects the axis of the prism. Draw the isometric projection of the truncated prism showing the cut surface. The simple position of solid is clearly given solid is resting on HP such that one of the edges of its base is parallel to VP. One edge of the base must be parallel to XY. You just replace the VP into XY. One of the edges of the base is parallel to XY. Since we know that solid is resting on HP, our top view will be a hexagon. You can give a notation after drawing the hexagon for the base side of 25 mm. You give your notation then extend a vertical projector to complete our front view. Front view height is 50 mm. So you can easily complete the front view and transfer the notations in the front view. As an observer if you are standing here you clearly know that this A, B, C, D will be visible. E and F is invisible. That's why E1 dash F1 dash E dash F dash is in the bracket. Now the section plane. What is the condition of section plane? Incline to HP. 50 degree to HP bisects the axis of the prism. Bisects midpoint. Midpoint of the axis of the prism out of 50 it is 25. Through this 25 mm midpoint of axis draw a inclined line which is 50 degree inclined to xy now this is our section plane transfer into the section plane representation this portion is the removed this part is the remaining portion of the solid convert the remaining portion of solid into thick lines convert one by one all the longer edges followed by the base you see here there is a small top face is the remaining portion of the solid now we have to identify cutting points of section plane on a1 dash b1 dash this is the first cutting point mark it as one dash if you extend a vertical projector the corresponding base side a1 b1 is here so we can mark here it as one next cutting point of section plane is on b1 dash b dash mark 2 dash here if you extend a vertical projector B1, B is exactly at this point mark 2 here. Next is on C dash, C1 dash, C dash, C1 dash, it is 3 dash. If you extend a vertical projector in the top view, C, C1 is here mark 3. Next, which is on C dash, D dash, make it as 4 dash, fourth cutting point on C dash, D dash. If you extend a vertical projector on CD, this is the meeting point of vertical projector, make it as 4. Again, DE. If you check D dash E dash, the next cutting point, which is phi dash, if you check this DE is invisible. As an observer, if you are standing here, this DE is invisible from here, that's why phi dash is represented in the bracket. So, after extending vertical projector, the cutting point on DE side is this point. Make it as 5. Next one is on E dash E1 dash. This is E E1. Make it as 6. And F F1. On F dash F1 dash. This is the next cutting point. Make it as 7 dash. Corresponding top view is 7. If you check here on F1 dash, A1 dash, the last cutting point is the 8.8 .8 dash and if you extend, this is the 8. If you extend a vertical projector on A1, F, A1, F1, 
in between a1 and f1 this is the meeting point make it as 8 now we identified all the cutting points of section plane we can join all the cutting points of section plane into thick lines 3 to 4 if you check carefully here this 4 to 5 is visible as well as 4 to 5 and if you check this 4 to d d to 5 check the front view 4 dash to d dash again 5 dash to d dash is visible so you have to convert this portion also into thick line then e2 f1 f1 to 8 a to 1 here this portion is the removed portion you check here this a1 dash a dash a1 dash is completely removed so this part of the portion you can leave as it is in the thin line this is our sectional top view do a hatching the entire top view is called sectional top view we can go for isometric projection before that you can frame a rectangle by joining all the corners of hexagon in the top view give a name or notation as pp1 qq1 rr1 s s1 because being a prism we are going to have one top face rectangle and base rectangle which means two hexagon in the hexagon plane surface one which is at top face another one which is at the base now we can go for isometric projection draw an isometric projection by keeping p corner p i always told you friends you have to keep the lowermost corner of the section plane if you check here this one dash is the lowermost cutting point of the section plane which is nearer to x y so you, we can choose this p corner fix here and measure the distance of p1 q1 here whatever you are drawing whatever you are drawing in this isometric projection must be converted into isometric scale from this simple position multiply whatever the value you are measuring from p1 to q1 it must be multiplied by 0.82 times the inclination between this p1 and q1 as well as p1 and s1 holds 30 degree that is the basic fundamental of isometric projection now you can complete this uh, p1 q1 r1 s1 rectangle by following the same procedure p1 and q1 p1 and s1 you can measure the distance from this simple portion rectangle multiplied by 0.82 times you can convert this portion after that what is the longer range height 50 mm 50 mm again convert into isometric scale by multiplying 0.82 times then you can use the same length for all longer edges so if you check this is s1 s p1 p and q1 q r1 r the top face now if you check here this p p1 q q1 everything is joined all the longer edges are identified now you can transfer identify the corners of hexagon a b c d a1 b1 c1 d1 e1 f1 in the base a b c d e f in the top face if you check a1 which is exactly on the midpoint of p1 s1 take the midpoint of p1 s1 mark a1 you can do it on the top face again the same distance on ps next is b b which is on pq side on pq side we are having b b1 b and b1 you measure the distance from uh, b1 measure the distance of b1 from p1 multiply by 0 0.82 times use this p1 as reference mark b1 use the same distance from p mark b in the top face similarly we can mark all the corners of x again next one is c c1 from q1 you measure the distance of c1 multiplied by 0 0.82 times from q1 you can mark c1 similarly from q see the same distance next is d1 which is exactly midpoint of q and r q1 r1 q and r q1 r1 take the midpoint q1 r take the midpoint last two cut uh, corner is e and f which is on r s side r1 s1 you can take the same procedure follow the same procedure from r1 
measure the distance of E1 multiplied by 0 0.82 times you can mark from R1 E1 similarly use the same distance for marking E in the top face now last point is F you follow the similar procedure to mark F and F1 now we identified all the corners of hexagon you can join all the corners of hexagon by thin lines you can extend the longer edges A A1 B B1 C C1 D D1 E E1 F F1 we extended all the longer edges now the top face of hexagon also joined this is the isometric projection of a prism without any section plane conditions now we have to identify all the cutting points of section plane it has to be transferred in this isometric projection if you check where is one dash for converting one dash and eight dash you see here from s1 from s1 there is a small distance of this green line you measure this distance multiply by 0.82 times and mark here okay and draw a line which is parallel to p1 s1 if you refer here also it is parallel to p1 s1 draw a line that green line which is cutting a1 f1 is 8 a1 b1 is 1 so if you check here a1 f1 this is the point make it as 8 here it is a1 b1 you can make it as 1 this green line which is cutting a1 b1 as 8 cutting a1 f1 sorry a1 b1 as 1 a1 f1 as 8 so next cutting point of section plane is 2 which is on b1 dash b dash b1 dash b dash you measure the distance from b1 dash what is the distance of 2 dash measure the distance multiplied by 0 0.82 times use b1 as reference mark 2 next is 3 dash which is on c1 dash c dash measure the distance of 3 dash from c1 dash use this c1 as reference after multiplying by 0.82 times mark 3 on this c1 dash c longer edge c1 c longer edge next one is 4 and 5 4 dash and 5 dash again follow the same procedure of 1 and 8 if you check a green line a perpendicular projector which is parallel to r1 and q1 rq r q top face to measure the distance of this vertical projector green line from r and use that distance after multiplying into 0.82 times draw a line parallel to xy that line which is cutting c and d is 4 okay c and d is 4 d and e is 5 c and d this is the cutting point make it as 4 this is the cutting point make it as 4 d and e this is the cutting point we can make it as 5 so fifth cutting points also identified next one is 6 next one is 6 which is on e dash e1 dash which is on e dash e1 dash same distance of 3 even while you are marking 3 you you can mark this 6 at the same time okay because 3 dash 6 dash holds the same distance on e e1 you measure the distance of uh, 3 dash after multiplying 0 0.82 times you can mark 6 on e e1 after marking uh, 6 on e e1 next one is 7 dash seventh cutting point of section plane which is on f f1 which is on f f1 similar to 2 dash so whatever the distance you used for 2 you can use the same distance for marking 7 from f1 dash you measure the distance of 7 dash now you can join 1 2 2 2 2 3 3 2 4 4 2 5 you can join one by one all the cutting points of section plane in the isometric projection 3 to 4 4 to 5 then 5 to 6 you can join by means of a thick line this is the cut surface which is exposed by a 
truncated prism. 5 to 6, finally 6 to 7, then 7 to 8. Again, you have to join 8 to 1. So, this is the cut surface. That's why we are doing a hatching for this cut surface. Now, if you, now if you check, friends, this part is completely visible. Check. If you see from here, 7 to F1. 7 dash to F1 dash. This is the remaining portion of solid. If you see from here, it is visible for us. 7 to F1 must be converted into thick. What about F1 to A1? You check. This is uh, 7, uh, 7 to F1 and F1 to A1. Okay, so A1, the smaller portion is the removed, so you no need to convert into thick, but F1 to 8 is the remaining portion of solid. If you check here also, F1 to 8 is the remaining portion of solid, you can join F1 to 8. Afterwards, 8 to 1, this 8 to A1 is the removed and A1 to 1 is the removed portion, we can leave as it is in the thin line. Now, this 1 to B1, B1 to C is C1 is visible from here as an observer. Then C1 to 3, C1 to 3 also visible from here as an observer. Don't join C1 to C. Well, you have to join C1 to 3 because C1 dash to 3 dash is the remaining portion of solid. 3 dash to C dash is the removed portion of solid. So you don't need to convert 3 to C into thick line. Last one is B1 to 2. Check here. This is B1 dash. This is 2 dash. This is the remaining portion of solid. If you see from here, this spot is visible. Make it as B1 2. Now, don't leave as it is here. There is a smallest portion. You have to take care. Check here. 4 to D. D to 5 is the remaining portion of solid. This is visible from here. Because this is the remaining portion of solid. So you can join 4 to D and D to 5 by means of a thick lines. This is the remaining portion of solid. 4 to D and D to 5 is the remaining portion of solid. So friends after joining this is the final answer of this question. Isometric projection of the truncated Prism. If you wish to check the video of isometric projection of the truncated cylinder, frustum permit, truncated permit, you can check the description box for link or check the channel playlist. If you understand this problem clearly, share the same with your friends. Thank you.